Good morning everyone. Thanks for joining in today. Today we are going to talk about the most commonest cancer that affects men, the prostate cancer. Some time ago I asked one of my urology colleagues to tell me what is the chance of me developing prostate cancer and his answer was that if all us men live long enough or live in our 90s then almost all of us will develop prostate cancer in our lifetime. So it is that common. However, he did mention that not all of us will die from this prostate cancer, which is in a way a bit reassuring. So let's discuss this further. First thing to remember is most patients who will develop prostate cancer will be over the age of 50 years. What are the symptoms of prostate cancer? The most common symptoms of prostate cancer are the same as we get with benign enlargement of the prostate gland and benign enlargement of the prostate gland will be the commonest cause for these symptoms. So if we have these symptoms and we are over the age of 50, we should not necessarily worry about prostate cancer. We should get it checked out by the doctor so he can rule out prostate cancer. However, the likely possibility for all these symptoms is benign enlargement of the prostate. So. Patients would like to pass urine more frequently. They go more often than they used to. They, are, they struggle to start their urine and the stream of the urine is very weak and they dribble afterwards. When they go to the toilet, they feel like they have not emptied their bladder completely. They get up several times at night to pass urine. They have to strain more to start their urine there may be blood in the urine or in the semen. Now, do remember, blood in the urine and semen can also be because of just infection of the prostate gland or the bladder or urine infection rather than developing prostate cancer. The last two symptoms usually happens when one has advanced prostate cancer, unintentional weight loss and bone pain. Why the bone pain? The reason for bone pain is because prostate cancer, when it spreads, it likes to spread to the spine and to the pelvic bones. And that causes quite severe pain in those bones. What will put us at a higher risk of developing prostate cancer? As I said earlier, it happens over the age of 50. As our age increases, the chance of developing prostate cancer increases. Black men are more prone to developing prostate cancer as compared to Asian men. If there's a family history of prostate cancer, for example, if my dad had prostate cancer, if my brothers had prostate cancer, then I am at a higher risk of developing prostate cancer, especially if my father or my brothers were under the age of 60 when they developed prostate cancer. Obesity also increase the risk of prostate cancer. The reason remains unclear. However, it might be to do with the diet, lack of exercise, etc. But that increases the risk of prostate cancer. So how is prostate cancer diagnosed? First thing, obviously, when somebody develops symptoms of not being able to pass urine or straining too much to pass urine, feeling incomplete emptying, going too much at night time to pass urine, men start worrying that they have some sort of prostate problem. So they will go to the doctor, the doctor will take a history. And in that history, they will ask obviously about our age. Doctor will also ask whether we have a family history of prostate cancer or not. Then the doctor will examine our prostate gland and this is done with a finger examination through the rectum. Doctor will want to order a urine test to make sure we have no urine infection because that will be the common cause of urine symptoms. It might also some blood test. And one of these blood tests is called prostate specific antigen. And I will discuss this further in my next slide. If the blood test of prostate specific antigen comes back quite high, then doctor will order an MRI scan to check the prostate gland because this is a very good scan to diagnose prostate cancer. If the prostate cancer is confirmed on MRI scan, then the doctors might also want to investigate whether the prostate cancer has spread to other parts of our body or not. 
and for this they might want to do a CT scan or a bone scan. After the MRI scan, when the prostate cancer is diagnosed, then the confirmation is done with prostate biopsies. These prostate biopsies can be taken either through our rectum or through our perineum. And the significance of these prostate biopsies, why they are so important, I will also explain in my next slide. So in a blood test, the doctor will like to check prostate specific antigen or PSA. This is a very important marker for abnormal function of the prostate gland. But do remember PSA can be high because of several reasons. It can be high because of infection of the prostate gland, benign enlargement of the prostate gland, etc. And PSA can be high for reasons other than prostate cancer. However, if the prostate specific antigen comes back as quite high, then doctor will like to investigate it further to make sure there is no prostate cancer. And to rule out prostate cancer, they will probably refer you to the hospital, to a urology team, who will do an MRI scan or some other form of scan like ultrasound scan to check for prostate cancer and might arrange some prostate biopsies. Once the prostate cancer has been diagnosed on MRI, then biopsies will be arranged. The biopsies are taken through a needle passed either through the rectum with an ultrasound scan probe or through the perineum. The biopsies are looked under the microscope and a Gleason score is calculated. This Gleason score gives indication to the doctor whether this prostate cancer is going to be very low active prostate cancer or very aggressive prostate cancer. And the Gleason score ranges from 6 to 10. If you have a low Gleason score of 6 or 7, then the prostate cancer will not be very aggressive. If, however, the Gleason score is high, which is 8 to 10, then the likely possibility is that this prostate cancer is going to behave aggressively. And that tells the doctors how to treat the patient. The treatment of prostate cancer depends on how early or how advanced the prostate cancer is at the time of diagnosis. So size of the cancer itself, the Gleason score of the cancer, the fitness of a patient and obviously age of the patient, or has the cancer spread beyond the prostate gland in the surrounding tissues of the prostate gland or into distant parts of the body like the liver or the lungs or the bones. All these things going to affect the treatment of the patient. Patients who are diagnosed with early prostate cancer not necessarily require any treatment. If they are very elderly or very frail or they have a very early prostate cancer which is not causing any symptoms, then just a watchful wait will be all that is required. So. If any symptoms happen or any problem the patient develops, then only any further investigations or treatment will be recommended. If the patients are fit and they have very little symptoms from their very early prostate cancer, then active surveillance is undertaken, which means regular PSA levels and regular MRI scans, which may be six monthly or yearly, depending on the stage of the prostate cancer, will be advised and the treatment will start if any of these tests show that the prostate cancer is becoming more advanced. What are the different treatments available for prostate cancer? Obviously it depends on the fitness of the patient, it depends on the stage of the tumour and it also depends on the facilities that are available in our local area where we are undergoing treatment for prostate cancer surgery in which the prostate gland can be removed and in many centers in UK and in Western world it's done by a robot called robotic surgery. Chemotherapy can be given to some patients with prostate cancer. Some patients may also require radiotherapy which is x-ray treatment. This can be external beam which means the x-rays shine from outside the body to give treatment 
or sometimes little beads are put inside the prostate gland which gives radiotherapy from inside. Hormone treatment may be necessary for certain patients. Experimental treatment like high intensity focus ultrasound or, or HIFU is also available in certain centers and cryotherapy which is freezing the cancer with some needles passed into the prostate gland to kill the cancer cells by freezing them is also available in certain centers. However, these are still experimental treatment and long-term results are unknown. If unfortunately the prostate cancer when diagnosed is very advanced, has spread to different parts of the body or the patient is not fit for any treatment, then palliative treatment becomes necessary. Palliative treatment basically means in some patients who are unable to pass urine, they will have a catheter put in. Patients who in severe amount of pain, they will be given painkillers. In some patients, to shrink the size of the tumor, extra treatment to the bones, where the tumor has spread to the bones to reduce the pain may be necessary. In some patients, sometimes hormone treatment is also given to control the symptoms and shrink the size of the tumor and give them extra time of survival. So this is all we need to know about prostate cancer. Thank you for joining in and until next time, I'll see you very soon. Take care.